So guys, welcome to the outreach week. Now I'm very, very excited for this because you know, this is really when you're gonna be able to see and truly understand how you can go about physically getting e-commerce clients, okay? Where do you go, where do you find them? How do you reach out to them? And that type of stuff, okay? And we're gonna be going through all of that in the outreach week and, and that is this week, okay? so. Before we even think or look at anything to do with, you know, email sequences and, um, you know, the best outreach methods and how do you go about talking to the business owners and whatnot, before we even think about that, what we need to do is understand who is the ideal prospect and how do you find them, okay? Because if you don't know how to find somebody, then it doesn't matter what outreach you do, it doesn't matter if you do emails, if you do um, you know, cold calling or whatever you do, it doesn't matter if you can't find them, right? So that's the first, well, that's the second thing actually. And the first thing is who is the ideal prospect? Like what does the ideal prospect look like? Well, let's get straight into that, okay? So first things first is IPB. Now, IPB stands for Initial Perfect Business, okay? So an initial perfect business is one that qualifies on all of the points, and again, we'll be going through all of those qualification points. Um, they qualify, and also it helps if they have a gut feeling, if that brand has a gut feeling. And I'm sure you guys know what I mean when I say, um, you know, a gut feeling, like just those brands that you come across and you can just see that they're an amazing, amazing business and you know that you can genuinely get them some really good results if they come on as a client, okay? That essentially is the makeup of an initial perfect business. And as we'll start to go through, you'll see and you'll really understand why we need to find these initial perfect businesses because that really is gonna depict the level of, you know, um, the, the level of business that we'll be able to find based on that initial perfect business. And guys, if that doesn't make sense just yet, do not worry, we will be going through that in this module. Now. How do you find the initial perfect business? You know, how do you find the IPB? Well, there's a few ways, okay? Native Google search always is a real good way simply because you can literally put into Google whatever niche you want and it's gonna bring up a whole heap of businesses. Now, just something to note on that, you know, when you do it, you always wanna to go to around page five, page six, just to weed out the real big players and then from there, um, those companies on, you know, kind of page five and onwards are going to be a lot more, um, you know, they're gonna be a lot more likely to be qualified, okay? Now, moving on to the third point there that I've got is Facebook and Instagram search. So, you know, when you're just going through, you know, Instagram Explore page, you're just going through Facebook or anything like that, you may come across businesses there as well, especially on Instagram Explore. Um, you know, there's actually a shopping tab on Instagram Explore. Click on that and it's literally shopping e-commerce brands, okay? That's a real good way to try and find the IPB. Um, and also e-com ads that you get served. So when you're going through, again, Facebook and Instagram and those types of mediums, obviously you're gonna get served ads. And if you get served an e-com ad, and you see that the product looks really good, but maybe the advertisement doesn't look too great or whatever the case may be, you could also use that as the IPB, okay? And again, guys, if this doesn't make too much sense just yet, do not worry, we're going to be going through every single part of this in deep detail, so you 100% understand what's going on and you'll be able to completely get um, kind of the, you know, the main concepts and underlying kind of foundation of the ideal prospect and what they look like and, in, in, you know, in terms of qualifications and so on and so forth. So here are the main points that you want to ensure that your client has, okay? And just here, guys, I'm gonna be going through it in theory, and then here in a moment, I'm actually gonna be pulling up a real life example um, and going through it, you know, a kind of impracticality, like what I genuinely look for in real life and what I would look for when I do come to doing my own lead sourcing for e-commerce, et cetera, et cetera. So here's the main ideas behind it though, okay? so. First things first, you want to ensure that your client has a solid foundation. And this actually comes in the form of quite a few different mediums, okay? So first things first is Instagram followers. You wanna ensure they have a solid foundation in terms of Instagram followers, because I'm not too sure if you guys know, but you know, some of you guys, you guys may know, but you can actually use 
Instagram following, Instagram engagement as audiences within the Facebook platform, and they actually do convert, you know, for certain clients, not all clients, but for some certain clients, they genuinely are some amazing audiences that you can target and, you know, really leverage within the, within the ad account. And so if your client has a solid foundation, well, then it's gonna make your job a lot easier when it comes to running the ads because you've got some amazing just audiences literally sat there waiting for you to target, okay? So that's the first thing in terms of foundation. The other thing as well in terms of foundations and ensuring they've got a solid foundation is making sure um, that they have a Facebook pixel installed. And again, we'll be going through this in practicality in a minute where we go through my six part qualification process. But again, as I mentioned before, I just wanna give you guys a rundown on what we really wanna look for and what yeah, essentially you, know, you wanna ensure that your client has, okay? Now, the second point there is branded content. So you need, and guys, this is something that always gets over overlooked, you need to make sure that your client has a good branded content, okay? Because the content that they will be showing on their Instagram page, on their Facebook page, et cetera, et cetera, that type and that level of content that you see there is going to directly correlate to the type and level of creatives that you can use when running the ads yourself, okay? So, you know, if the client has terrible content on their Instagram page, terrible content across their socials and whatnot, then you can't expect to have good creatives. And obviously we need some good creatives. We need a different, we need different um, variations and different types of creatives when it comes to running the ads, because that's gonna help us get a lot better results. So again, you really wanna weed out the clients who have, you know, just terrible creatives across their social platforms, et cetera. Um, oh, sorry, terrible content across their social platforms, because that will then essentially, you know, weed out the clients who have bad creatives, okay? So the two highly correlate. Um, so by ensuring they have, you know, by ensuring your client has branded content, then again, it's gonna make your job a lot easier when it comes in the back end of you actually running the ads because it's gonna mean that you've got good creatives to use, as I say, in the back end, okay? Now, the third point there, the budget to us, you know, to afford your services. So you need to ensure that your client has the budget to afford your services. Now, this is something that's, you know, yes, the, you know, granted there is those um, Chrome extensions out there that do tell you like the annual revenue and whatnot, but really those don't work for every single client. So the best way to, you know, kind of get a good understanding as to whether the client can afford your service or not is simply by, you know, that really kind of does just tie in with the initial point there of a solid foundation. If the brand has a solid foundation across platforms um, that, you know, they've got pixel installed, you can see they're getting a lot of traffic and all that kind of stuff. Usually it's a very, very good telltale sign that they do have the budget to afford your service. So again, that's just something else that you want to look out for. And once again, um, we'll be going through this here in a minute through my six part qualification process. Now, another thing you need to ensure your client has an effective website. Okay. This is really, really important. If the client doesn't have an effective website, if the client's website doesn't look clean, it doesn't look efficient, you know, it looks all over the place and you just don't, you just get a bad feel around the website, you know, you just get that bad vibe, then just leave that prospect and move on guys, honestly, because if the client's website doesn't convert in terms of, you know, website conversion rate, if it doesn't have a high website conversion rate, then really it doesn't matter how much traffic, doesn't matter how qualified the traffic is that you go ahead and push to that website. If it doesn't convert, well, you're not gonna get any sales, you're not gonna make them any purchases, and essentially you're not gonna make them any money, and you as the marketer are naturally going to get the blame for it. Um, when really, like yes, it's still in your realm of, you know, kind of the service, but you know, also it's simply because the website doesn't convert. So again, you really wanna go ahead and weed out those clients that have the bad, bad website um, straight off the bat, just so you don't have to put up with those problems, okay? Now, the last and final point here that I've got is that they are running some sort of Facebook ads currently, okay? Now, let's just get into the practicality side of it, okay? So let's walk through my six part qualification process that I take each and every single prospect through, okay? So, as I mentioned, um, this is a brand that I have found, okay? I found them via doing a native Google search. So what I have done here, okay, is I've done a just a native Google search. I just did clothing, pulled up this brand because I went to the fifth 
page on Google, weeded out the big players as I talked about before, found this brand, I pulled up their website and then I pulled up their Instagram and here we are now, okay? Now, this is me trying to look for the IPB, okay? Remember the initial perfect business. So this is the exact process that you need to do. Now, once you come onto the um, you know, a brand's Instagram page, this is where the six part qualification process starts. Okay, so you need to start on the Instagram at all times because the six part qualification process is in a certain order for a certain reason. Okay, and again, the first qualification point of the six part qualification process starts on Instagram. So as a direct result, we always need to start on the Instagram. So without further ado, guys, let's jump straight into the six part qualification process. So the first point of the process is that you want to ensure that the brand has between 15,000 to 150,000 followers. Okay, 15,000 to 150,000 followers is the first qualification point on the process. Now, the reason for that is oftentimes, um, you know, anything lower than 15,000, usually for the most part, it means that the brand is somewhat small and probably can't afford a two to $5,000 per month service, okay? And then anything over that, usually, again, it's a good sign that they're too big. Now, this is a really good example because obviously it's 15 to 150,000. This brand has 173,000 followers. So, you know, in this case, it's not the end of the world, you know what I mean? It's not too big of a deal because they've got slightly over. You can still work with a brand of this size, okay? But if it was around 500,000, then obviously that's when it starts to get quite big and usually brands of that size already have, um, you know, they already have agencies working with them um, and so on and so forth, okay? So that's the first point. Um, 100, uh, sorry, 15,000 to 150,000 followers on Instagram. The second point, okay, is that you don't want to work with any verified brands. Again, verified brands often means that it's going to be a very established brand. And obviously we wanna work with established brands. We wanna work with brands that have strong foundations, but we don't wanna work with brands that are already working with agencies and real, real big agencies and all that type of stuff. Okay, and usually for the most part, brands that, have, that are verified and are over our following parameters, usually we'll be working with very large agencies or just agencies already. And so they're just naturally harder to sell. Okay, so and again, this qualification point, uh, sorry, this qualification process really serves multiple purposes in that it serves, you know, you only ever reach out to brands that can genuinely afford your service, but also it serves the purpose of making your job as easy as possible. Okay, so now let's move on to the third qualification process. Uh, uh, point, I should say. So the third qualification point is that you want to scroll down and you want to look through their um, Instagram content and just ensure, okay, ensure that they've got good, high quality branded content. And obviously, as you guys know, this ties in with the point of ensuring that your client has branded content. You do that by scrolling through their Instagram feed and just making sure that their posts and whatnot look high quality. Because again, as you guys already know by now, that it, this will directly correlate to the level of creative that you can use over on the Facebook advertising platform, okay? Now, as always, if you have found a brand that up until this point, so for, you know, from the initial three points, um, the initial three point process of the qualifications, if they qualify in those initial three points, then obviously you wanna take them onto the fourth qualification point. And to do that, we wanna pull up their website. Oftentimes you'll find the website in the bio there. So you wanna pull up their website, okay? Now, the fourth qualification point is that you want to ensure the brand on the website has a Facebook pixel installed and you do that by installing the um, Chrome extension called Facebook Pixel Helper. Majority of you guys will have it. If you don't get that installed without a doubt, it's gonna massively help you, okay? So you wanna ensure they've got the Facebook Pixel Helper installed and you can simply, you don't even need to click on it. Um, you can just see if this is green with a number in there, you know they've got a pixel installed, okay? So that's the fourth point. And again, this serves as, 
ensuring the brand has a strong foundation because in the first, even just the first couple weeks, even the first you know few days really, you can just run some retargeting ads, you can run some lookalike audience ads and just get some amazing, amazing results straight off the bat with the client, purely from the use of their Facebook pixel. Whereas if you reach out to brands that don't have a Facebook pixel installed, then what you actually have to do is actually build the foundation. So again, you can, you guys can see that this, you know, this qualification process serves multiple purposes and in this case it's serving you know ensure by ensuring they've got a facebook pixel installed it's ensuring that um you and you know your agency is going to have a much easier time getting the company that you work with amazing amazing results okay now again if they qualify up until now you want to move on to the fifth point the fifth qualification point in the six part process is that you want to scroll through their um website okay and just click through, have a look, and just ensure that their website looks clean, it looks effective, it looks efficient, it doesn't look scammy, and essentially one of the best things you can ask yourself is just simply, would I buy from this website? Okay, if you wouldn't buy from an e-com website that you're on, for whatever reason it may be, if you wouldn't buy, then you cannot expect other people to buy. Okay, so again, this kind of ties in with the with the uh, you know ins by ensuring that the client has um, a high website conversion rate. You just want to click through, just you know, click on a few buttons, have a have a look through, go into a product, um, and and you, and really, you can see from this website straight off the bat that, you, that they're they're very nice. Uh, it's a very very nice website, very very clean website. Um, I'm not too sure about this stuff here, actually. Um, but for the most part, it looks pretty good to me. You know, the home page looks really, really good. Um, so they, in my opinion, qualify. And really, this brand up until now, they've qualified on every single point, okay? Now, for the last and final, you know, the sixth and final qualification point, you wanna scroll down and you wanna pull up their Facebook page. And then from the Facebook page, you then wanna go into the page transparency section um, of the brand. And then you wanna pull up their ad library. So you can see here, I'm in the ad library of this company. Um, so this is where the sixth and final qualification point comes into play, okay? So the sixth and final qualification point is that you want to ensure the brand is running between one and 15 ads, okay? If the brand is running between one and 15 ads, it shows us that they genuinely believe in Facebook ads, in that they are currently, you know, they're actively spending money on the ads, um, but they're not using Facebook to its full potential because, you know, if they were using Facebook to its fullest potential, then they would be spending, uh, sorry, they'll be running a lot more than one to 15 ads, okay? Now, with this brand, you can see they're running 29, you know, you can see that number by here, they're running 29. I still would say these guys qualify. And these parameters that I've set, whether it's be in the ads, whether it be the Instagram followers, et cetera, et cetera, they're the sweet spot that I've personally found. But again, this, is, this brand is a really good example because if you find a brand like this, where you go on the website, you know, you can just see that everything looks really good, products look really good, very strong Instagram foundation. You come in here, they're running 29 results. Well, in all honesty, still at 29 results, you know, they're still not using Facebook to its most highest potential. So again, in that case, I'd still reach out to them simply because they qualify so much on all of the other points. And you know, you can also come through, um, you know, and have a look through their physical ads and just have a look to see if there's anything that jumps out at you straight away, okay? Um, and for me on here, that's one thing that jumps out to me straight away is that there's not too much variation in terms of creatives. It all looks very, very similar. Um, you know, it looks very, very similar. Um, and so, you know, I personally would like to see more, you know, variation, more different types of videos because we can actually only see one type of video, um, one type of video there, somewhat variation here. But, you know, it looks very, very, um, 
kind of one-sided in a way and it's not they're not really split testing ads and as you guys see in the uh, in the Facebook foundation uh, sorry in the Facebook week where we go through service delivery um, you'll see the importance that you know myself and my agency and really just the importance overall in terms of split testing ads um, you know ads themselves so you can just see here as well there's not too much variation um, the copy doesn't look too good to, to be honest like Obviously, I can't really see at what point they're running this in terms of in the funnel and whatnot, but they're not doing too much variation in copy either. Um, so, you know, that's something that I could touch on in when I make my, uh, you know, when I outreach to the company. Okay, so that's essentially the qualifications process as a whole. Okay. So as I said, what we just went through there in practicality, that essentially is the six part qualification process that you wanna take each and every single client through when you, be, oh sorry, before you outreach to them because that will then ensure that they are qualified um, and obviously them being qualified means that they can genuinely afford your service. It means that they can genuinely benefit from your service and also it's going to be a brand that's actually going to make your job somewhat a lot more easier than a brand, you know, that doesn't have a foundation, than a brand that doesn't really have any kind of solid, um, you know, proof of concept or anything like that, okay? Again, that qualification process serves so many purposes, so make sure you stick to it because it's gonna make your job a whole lot easier, okay? Now, how to structure your stake outreach. Okay, and I know you're probably thinking, what the hell am I talking about, okay? But you always need a stake outreach. Now, a stake outreach is basically the main dish. You know, you, if you go out to a restaurant, you, you know, and you, you know, get some dinner, usually um, the steak is going to be your main dish, okay? And that's, that's the main thing. And this also kind of ties in with the 80-20 rule, okay? So... Steak outreach, how do you structure your steak outreach? Well, first of all, what do I mean? Well, you want to be focusing 80% of your time on one thing when it comes to outreach. 80% of your time on one thing, okay? And you'll see, um, I'll kind of reveal it now, my steak outreach that I focus 80% of my time on is email outreach. Now, from here, you can also have side dishes. Now, the side dishes can be, you know, the steak is your main dish, so that's what you're going to focus 80% of your time on. And then the side dishes is where you can kind of focus 20% of your time on, okay? And the side dishes can be a multitude of other things. And there's many, many students within this program that are doing so many different types of side dish outreaches and they are working just as well as the steak outreach, okay? So once you do this testing and whatnot, you can always change out your steak outreach, but you always wanna make sure that you're focusing 80% of your time on one outreach. So now let me show you exactly how to structure your steak outreach within Pipedrive, okay? So now that we're in Pipedrive, this is how I structure my personal steak outreach. Okay, so lead in, right? So this is where we're gonna be putting our highly qualified leads. So when we find a qualified lead, like we just did with this company right here, when we find a qualified lead, we want to then bring this lead and put it into Pipedrive. Now, what information, where do you get the information from? Well, if you find a brand, or should I say, when you find a brand that qualifies in every single one of those um, you know, that six part qualification process we just went through. When you find a brand that qualifies, you know, and you're in the ad library, you come in here, this is the sixth point, and you see that they qualify for whatever reason it is within the within the ad library, you know, they, they have that, um, you know, between one and 15 ads, or in this case, it may be slightly over, but they still qualify. Well, at this point, you wanna then go back onto the website. Then you wanna make sure that you have Snovio installed. And when you get that installed, you can click on Snovio, Okay, and this is gonna help us find the owner's name and email. So you pull up Snovio, and you can see straight off the bat, Snovio has pulled it up. So up here, it's gonna have a few names um, that are obviously employees within the business, Whether and then over on the right-hand side here, it's gonna say dash, and it's gonna say row. Well, you guys can see just as well as I can that we've found the direct owner here, okay? Leanne Hen Henricks, um, dash company owner. Well, now we know that the owner of Billy J Boutique is Leanne Hendricks. 
Okay, now what we can do simply is come into the email list below here and just match up the email with the owner. Simple as that. So we wanna highlight the email and copy it, okay? And then we wanna come back into the, uh, you know, into pipe drive. Within contact person name, that's where we wanna put the owner's name. So I'm gonna put Leanne, I'll put in here owner's name, okay? Now over on the right hand side where it says email, we wanna paste in the um, owner's email that we just copied from Snovio. Organi organization name, that's obviously just where we wanna put um, the business name, Billy J, I think it's Boutique. Okay, I'll just put it in here for you guys, business name. And that's the only three pieces of information I actually ever get on a business. I know a lot of the time people always say like, oh, you need to bring, you know, you need to get all of their social media links. You need to get all of, uh, you know, like the LinkedIn link and the website link and all this sort of stuff. But really guys, you don't need any of that information because if in the event you did need to go onto the Instagram page, you did need to pull up their website, whatever the case may be, well, you can because you've got the business name. Okay, you've got the business name right here. You've got the website name because usually that's gonna be the other bit of, you know, that's gonna be the uh, within the email. Like, you've got it all there so you can just pull it up and you guys will find that this um, kind of qualification of finding the leads and whatnot really comes down to efficiency and effectiveness. And so by adding in all the social media links and adding in all that kind of stuff, that really takes away from the efficiency of the method, okay? So that's the only three pieces of information we need. So we can just go save, okay? Now, what we have now done, you can just click out of this stuff. Um, so what we have now done is built out a qualified lead, okay? Um, and we have now put it into Pipedrive. So up until now, you guys know the exact process that I take from having no idea about a business to how to find the business, then to how to qualify the business and ensure that they genuinely are qualified for our services, and then how to put it into Pipedrive. Now, let's discuss the stake outreach. So first things first, email one, two, and three, they're gonna be email scripts that you guys are gonna get in the next um, in the next module. Um, so they're the email scripts. Now this is what I have seen work best for myself, okay? When I go through this, this is what I have seen work best for me. You guys could have four, five follow-up sequences, five emails, whatever the case may be, I'm giving you exactly what's worked for me, but do not hesitate, and I actually implore you guys to test things for yourself and change things up and see how it works better for you, okay? But again, this is what I've seen work best for me, so this is what I'm gonna teach. Now, email one through three, they're email scripts. Every time, so when, once you send, let's say for example, you send email one, you drag the business owner, uh, sorry, the business over into the respective column as to where they're at. This is going to help you massively in storing and organizing all of the leads that you get. It may seem very, very simple with one lead, like just move them where they're at, you know what I mean? It may seem very, very simple, but when you guys get like 100, 150, 200 leads in here, it becomes very, very tough to organize and store. So you need to make sure you follow this process because it's gonna massively help you, okay? now. Another thing to note is you always want to leave a two day buffer window between each email you send. So if you send email one on Monday, you do not want to send email two until Thursday. And obviously you only send email two if they do not reply back and they don't set a meeting straight away. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now, let's say you've sent email one, you've waited two days, you've sent email two, waited two days, sent email three, and they've still not got back to you after another two days. Well, what do you do now? Well, there's two things you do, okay? Either you throw them away, so you can just literally click on the deal here and you can just put into delete, or, and this is this is really where this, this uh, outreach process and kind of system becomes very, very effective, okay? So depending on the level of intent a business shows will honestly depict what you do next. So let's say you've sent email three and they've still not replied back. Okay, they've not replied back and they've not set a meeting just yet. Well, let's look at the level of intent. Okay, so if they haven't replied back, then the level of intent you can depict from a brand is based on how many times they open the email. So you can install any email tracker out there. There's so many out there and you just install any one that's out there that you prefer most. 
personally, I use um, Cloud HQ. But really, guys, when it comes to email trackers, like you can just use literally anyone out there because they all serve the same purpose and they will all track. Um, you know, they will all track the open rates, and that's really all you need for your email tracker. Okay. So, if the brand has opened the email three or more times, then at that point you can send them a loom because you know that they're interested. Now, I see looms, sending out your looms and whatnot, I see this as essentially the exact same concept as retargeting on Facebook. So when you run a retargeting ad on Facebook for an e-commerce brand, what you do is you serve those who have shown a certain level of intent an ad, right? You essentially follow up with them, but you serve them that ad because you know they're genuinely, you know, intentful, right? So they may have added the product to the car or they may have initiated checkout, but they haven't done the final thing. Obviously with an e-commerce brand, the final thing is simply to purchase. Now for us, the final thing is for them to set a meeting, right? The f that's the final thing, for them to go ahead and set a meeting. But they may have not set the meeting because, you know, for any reason, but because, just because they didn't set a meeting doesn't mean to say they're not genuinely interested. So again, in that case, you can go ahead and send them over a loom and essentially retarget with a loom. That's essentially the main concept behind this loom if interested column. You wanna retarget to them with a loom if they're interested. Now, another good way to see the level of intent that the brand has is, you know, maybe the brand has actually replied back off of any one of these emails, right? Maybe they've replied back, um, but for whatever reason, they just don't seem to be setting the meeting. Well, again, in that case, you can just go ahead and send them a loom because you know they're genuinely interested. So you can go ahead and send them a loom um, and just show your face, show your, you know, let them hear your voice and whatnot. And then from there, hopefully you'll be able to sell the meeting because again, guys, always remember in outreach, you're never selling your service. You're always selling the meeting. Okay, so hopefully in the, the loom, you know, it's going to sell the meeting for the brand that have shown a level of intent, but just haven't set the meeting yet. That will then go ahead and motivate them to set the meeting. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, what do I say in the loom? Well, what you wanna go ahead and say in the loom is essentially just pull up their brand and then pull up one of their competitors that are actually running ads and really using Facebook to its full potential and then just literally compare the two and just keep pounding the fact that this business over here is consistently getting better results month on month simply because they are just using Facebook to, you know, they're just using Facebook to its full fullest potential. Um, and that, you know, how you genuinely think that the company you're reaching out to has a better product, has better shipping times, et cetera, et cetera. But they're just getting, you know, essentially their competitors are stealing the market share away from them. Basically, just because they're running ads and, and you know, the company you're reaching out to isn't, okay? Something as simple as that it can be a five minute loop. And that's all it really needs, okay? So from there, again, the, pr the rest is you know somewhat self-explanatory. If they reply back, reply back column. If they set a meeting, meeting set column. And obviously, if you get on the meeting and they sign up with you, then paying client column. As simple as that. So that is how I structure my stake outreach. And that's how I personally think you should structure your stake outreach. Now, how do we find highly qualified leads at scale? Okay, how do we find highly qualified e-commerce brands at scale? Because obviously the initial, you know, to find the IPB, you know, native Google search and searching on Instagram um, and Facebook and looking at ads that we get served, I mean, that isn't the best, and really that's not an efficient way to find leads. But we can use that to find the IPB because we're only trying to find one business, right? We're not trying to find 20, 30, 40, 50 businesses. We're only trying to find one. And so we can use those um, medians to find the businesses because again, we're only trying to find one. So if it's not efficient, it's not that effective, it doesn't matter because we're only trying to find one. But we can't use those to find leads at scale. So how do we find highly qualified leads at scale? Well, let's 
have a walkthrough of exactly how I do that. So what you wanna do is come back onto Instagram, okay? We wanna come back onto Instagram and we wanna come back onto the brand that we have just gone through and that you know now is fully qualified. We've put them into pipe drive. They're ready to go through our stake outreach process. Um, and again, we know that they're highly qualified and they have that gut feeling around the brand in that we know we can genuinely get them amazing results. They've got amazing product, amazing website, all that good stuff. What we wanna do is come back onto their Instagram page and then from there we wanna come and click on the little downward arrow next to follow. And then from there we wanna click on see all. Now what this is gonna do, as you can see here, is gonna bring up a whole heap of similar accounts to an already qualified initial perfect business. Now, all of these accounts, guys, are going to be similar to an already highly qualified business. Okay, look how many there are. Okay, and from here, all we need to do is open each and every one, okay, up into a new tab, like so. I'm not gonna go through them all, but we're gonna open up each and every one through into a new tab, and we're gonna take this brand now through the same six-part qualification process. Same with this one, same with this one, same, you know, and you wanna do that for every single brand that it pulls up, okay? And then you can take each and every one of those through the six-part qualification process, and guys, trust me when I say, I've had it where I have literally found 20 highly qualified leads based off of one initial perfect business, just one. I've then gone ahead and found 20 highly qualified leads based off of that business. And guys, don't forget, you know, you wanna open up every single account that it, come, it brings up initially from here. And then also, you know, let's say we go through this account and we can see that they're qualified. You know, we take them through the six part qualification process. We put them into pipe drive and then you wanna come back onto this account once you've exhausted all of these accounts, you wanna come back onto this account because we know they're qualified and do the same thing, okay? We wanna do the same thing onto this account because here's 20, another 20 qualified leads. And then let's say, for example, this account's qualified, then we wanna do the same thing on here because we know it's another 20 qualified, uh, sorry, it's another bunch of similar accounts or an already perfect business. So really guys, it just goes to show how amazing and immensely powerful this um, method is. And I know, you know, some people do know about this, you know, Instagram suggestions method, but you need to ensure that the initial, you know, the business that you actually click on the downward arrow on and make on CO and do the similar accounts, you need to make sure that the initial, that, that this business is actually actually qualified and is actually, um, you know, actually qualifies in terms of the six part qualification process. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this module. We really broke down what an ideal client looks like. And then from there, like we obviously also went into how to physically find them. Like where do you even go? And then how to, as this says on the screen right now, how to then go ahead and find highly qualified leads at scale. Also, how to store them correctly in Pipe Drive, and then also we discussed our stake outreach. Now let's move on to the physical outreach in terms of email, in terms of Loom, and a few other side dish outreaches that I really wanna discuss with you guys. Now that we actually know what an ideal client looks like.